By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am going to play against a Legends deck. And I mean, that is always tons of fun. So thank you, Jean, because I'm playing against Jean for building these type of decks. I love Legends decks. And I myself am playing with one of my favorite decks as well, the Artificer Inventions deck. Now, before I'm gonna go to the match, as always, I'm gonna do a little bit of deck tech. If you wanna go straight to the game, check the description below and click on the timestamp. Now, let's take a look at the decks. Jean is bringing a Legends deck to the table and let's look at this. So we see a lot of Legends, maybe they don't all ring a bell. So let's just go through them one at a time. So we've got Gwendolyn on the left and what she can do, she can tap to let your opponent discard a card. You can only do this in your own turn. Then we've got Tetsuo Umezawa and he's kind of like a Royal Assassin Deluxe because okay, you do have to pay tons of mana to activate him there. I think a red, two black and a blue. And then you can destroy target tap creature, but you can also destroy a blocking creature. So that's pretty cool. And then we have Solkanar the Swamp King. So obviously it's a 5-5 five, five, for 4, which is pretty good stats. It's got Swamp Walk as well. And you gain one life each time uh, you cast a black spell. So that is pretty cool. Then on number 4 there, uh, right beside the Solkanar, we've got the Oaken Shield. And what the Oaken Shield can do is, again, you've got to pay tons of mana and tap it, but then you can get a creature card from your graveyard back to your hand. So it's kind of like the Argivian Archaeologist, but then for creatures. And then last but not least, we've got Bartle, and he is a 6-5 mean machine, and he also has Vigilance. So that is pretty bad, uh, badass. So a big, beefy creature. And then, of course, we see a lot of red. So I guess... This deck is Legends, Red Power, you know, we see the Shivan, we, we see the uh, Two-Headed Giant, which I think is a beautiful creature. We see the Granite Gargoyle. Advice, if you don't know the flavor text of Granite Gargoyle, take a moment to check it out because it is beautiful. Okay, so this is the deck of Jean. I cannot wait to play against this pile. Well, it's not his deck, but these are some of the highlights out of his deck. Uh, let's take a look at my brew. And this is the deck that I am playing with today. And if you're a regular visitor of the channel, you've probably seen this deck already. It's my Artificer deck. Um, what to say? Basically, it it's revolves around the Sage of Latnam. Um, that's a creature from the Antiquities. One blue and one, and you can tap it to sacri and sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. So it's really nice whenever my opponent would use any, any type of artifact removal or creature removal on an artifact or, you know, whatever. In response, I want to tap my Sage so I get a, a card out of that transaction so that I kind of get ahead whenever the opponent is playing one of these one-for-ones, like like a Shatter on my Suchi. I can say, you know what, I'm going to sack my Suchi for a card, and then your, your Shatter is gone, my Suchi is gone, hey, but I have a card left, so I'm actually getting on top of the game that way. Now, there are also some other synergies here. You see Taunus's Coffin, so I can put my creatures with counters on them in my coffin, and when they go out, they keep the counters they had when they came in, and they come back with double the amount of counters. So, um, or just the, the counters that usually go when they enter the battlefield come onto the creature again. So to give you an example, Triskelion, when you cast it, it gets three plus one plus one counters. Now, when I put it in the box, the counters stay on the Triskelion, then in my uh, untap step, I can untap my coffin and the Triskelion comes out of the coffin. It does come out of the coffin tapped. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind, but it comes with three additional plus one plus one counters. So that makes it six. If I put it in a coffin again, it comes out with nine. If I put and so on and so on. So I can, in theory, very, very slowly build a huge Triskelion Fireball for 20? I don't know. It would be 21 because it's 3 each time, you know, 7 times 3 is 21. Um, that would take me 6 turns, so I don't really think that's going to happen. Uh, we see some more. Obviously, uh, uh, Mana Vault may be nice to mention here. Mana Vault, I can easily sec to my Sage. So my ideal play would be get 3 mana out of Mana Vault and then sec the Mana Vault to my Sage, get 3 mana and a card out of one single Mana Vault. That would be Pretty amazing. All that for just one colorless mana to cast. So that would be really amazing. Also, we see there my two City in the Bottles. I just love playing City in a Bottle because th th there are just so many strong and powerful Arabian Night cards, especially the creatures. And since I only play some City of Brasses, actually a full playset, okay, and a Library of Alexandria, I mean, I feel like it's worth it. And 
What if I, I am in a situation where I really need a city of brass or really need a loa, but my city in the ball is on, on, the, on the field? I can always sack it to my sage, draw a card in, in turn, and then be able to play my Arabian Nightlands again. So, um, yeah, this is my deck. Let's go to the match. Game number one, and John is sitting on the left. He is playing the Legends deck. Look at that nice Bayou. Turn one, and bringing a Mishra's Factory and a Mox. Pearl here to the table. There's a Felber Stone. So that Felber Stone is not going to be very useful yet because they only have colorless mana. Oh, and look at that. I'm probably doing this on purpose, trying to make that Felber Stone as useless as I can. Attacking here for three. So Jean is going to 17. City in a bottle. Not knowing that I'm playing this main as well. Usually a very strong card against my deck. Not so much. Although, of course, it does block my full playset of City of Brass. And there I go, I'm trying to hit his mana base as hard as I can, attacking for four here. And this is difficult for Jean, I guess. He only has one blue now, has to pass turn. And I'm just gonna keep swinging in. As long as I'm ahead, I'm not gonna play out any colored land. And passing turn again, untapping. Maybe if I can find a disenchant, I could disenchant the Felwar and then play a colored mana. Okay, I guess I'm just going to attack. He's already on five. This is a very strange game. I mean, I almost want to apologize because we want to see Jean's legends. I'm sorry, Jean. Wow, that was quick. Okay, game one is done. And um, yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes these games, they go this way. Um, let's hope for some fireworks in game number two. Game number two is about to begin. And man, that first game was, was just crazy. Uh, it also shows the power of Mishra's Factories. Um, playing a Mana Vault turn one actually is pretty good for me. Maybe I can find a Sage to follow it up. And there's a Birds of Paradise from Jean. Let's see what I can do. Playing a Vault, wanting to play something, changing my mind. Maybe I want to wait until I have six mana. That's kind of an important um, number in my deck, playing with four Triskelions and two Tetravites. And there it is, Granite Gargoyle. Beautiful, difficult to cook, but a beautiful creature. 2-2 two, two flyer from red for one red plus zero plus one. And look at that. Yeah, now I'm gonna tap some mana here. So something's coming. I am changing. Okay, okay, I'm doing it. Taking a damage. Playing my Tetravis. Um yeah, playing my Tetravis. It's a 4-4 four, four flyer. And I'm probably gonna get the counters. It's a 1-1 one, one creature from Antiquities. It's flying and it comes into play with three plus one plus one counters that you can actually take off and make them into little Tetra Vites, 1-1 one, one flying creatures. And you can do that during your upkeep and every time you can also put them back during your upkeep. So it's kind of like a Lego set. And let's see what is happening here okay i'm taking off the counter so i've now got three one one flyers and then okay so i want to play a swords on the gargoyle there's a flash counter and i'm not sure if this is the right line of play from my side to be honest uh and i'm then talking about taking those three counters off of the uh tetravis Anyway, playing an Archaeologist, so that kind of makes sense. Maybe I'm hoping that my Tetravis will end up in the graveyard so I can t get it back and recast it. But I don't have a lot. I have a lot of mana, but that mana vault is tapped, of course. There we see Bartle, legendary creature number one here in this matchup. 6-5, and he doesn't have to block when he's attacking. So that is pretty sweet. And going to 16 here for some reason. Not quite sure why I'm going to 16 instead of 17. Oh, yeah. Okay, not quite sure what's happening here. Playing a Sea of Brass. And passing turn. It's not quite sure why I went to 15 life here. I understand the damage from the Mana Vault, but other than that, there doesn't seem to be any reason to take damage. Of course, the City of Brass tap, but then still. Okay, now anyway. Let's take a look at what John is going to do in his turn. He's going to move the lance a little bit because there's some, a lot of glare on that left side of the table. We do see it's a bayou. He's got so much mana now and so many different color types of mana. Oh, this is trouble. Oaken Shield. And this is a creature from Legends, probably asking him how it works again. Um, you can tap a bunch of mana, pay three, and then bring back a creature. 
and that is problematic and the reason it's problematic is that if I didn't choose to block oh city in a bottle there goes my lance if I didn't choose to block Bartle on two creatures he can simply bring it back next turn with his oaken shield so for me it's important now to find a way to get rid of oaken shield I guess I need Triskelion to do that or a swords to plowsiers so I have some options Let's see, attacking here, of course, with the Bartle, blocking it on my Tetravis, hoping to get it back next turn, but I don't have a lot of mana to play it again. Taking damage from the Vault, going to 14 here, playing an Island, at least finding some land, playing a Mox Pearl. Okay. Things are looking a little better. Playing a Sage of Latinam, that could be a big, big game changer here. Because Sage is going to allow me to draw cards. And if I can draw cards, maybe I can find a solution. What am I going to do next turn? Because my Sage still has Summoning Sickness. So I cannot block uh, with a creature and then sack it to my Sage, for example. That would be a nice trade to make. But I can't do that yet. There we see another Birds of Paradise. Here we see the attack by the Bartle and the Granite Gargoyle. What am I going to do? Probably going to take two from the Granite and block the Bartle, perhaps. Just jump block. Wow, okay, this, I mean, to be honest, I think this is a mistake on my part. Blocking here with two 1-1 one, one creatures, I would just let the damage of Gargoyle come through. It's only two damage. And taking, end of turn, bring back the Tetravis, taking a damage from the Vault. And playing a Plains, meaning I've got six mana now. Will we see a Triskelion? Yes, sir, there's a the Triskelion. This is a little bit confusing with all the counters, but I'm using two of the counters to shoot down the Oaken Shield. And that means that next turn I can possibly chump block, or well not chump block, I can just double block, I mean, on Bartle and kill him. He's got five toughness. Attacking here. Let's see what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna pull, okay, I'm again gonna block the Gargoyle, shooting a bird down, to Skellion dies, and then in block and sack to Sage. I think this is an okay play. On the other hand, maybe I should have just blocked with the Triskelion and the Suchi to kill Bartle. Let me know what you think. And there is a time walk and he's attacking again with this Bartle. Now I have to block Ame Suchi. Well, I don't have to, but I choose to. And... Let's hope that my archaeologist can stay on the field. Taking the two damage from the gargoyle, so I'm going to 11 here. Remember, I blocked the Bartle with my Suchi. Going to 10 because of the Vault. Don't want to use it because it just have so much that I want to get back. <laughs> oh, tapping six. And playing a new Tetravis, a 4-4 flyer. And let's see if this can change anything here. I mean, I've still got that Bartle to deal with. Uh, and apparently I haven't found a sword, so maybe I'm waiting for his attack step. And there is a Setch Troll, 3-3 regenerate, another annoying creature. And I'm just putting it in front of the bus, really. And, oh, look at that. I'm just blocking with my Sage. I mean, this is not looking good for me. I mean, if I'm blocking with the Sage, things are looking grim. I want to keep that Archaeologist because it just gives me access to so many strong creatures. But remember, they're very expensive to cast. Let's see what I'm going to do. Tapping two here, bringing back a Trike. Playing it out. And again, in all honesty, I think what I should have done here... Okay, I'm shooting down the Gargoyle because he has no uh, red mana left. So it was kind of a target for me there. Oh, Soul Canard is Swamp King. 5-5. Five, five. Really nice. It just looks like I'm getting bashed here, to be honest, in all honesty. I mean, Jean, you're still on 20. I'm on 10. And, I mean, all I'm doing this game is trying to stay alive. Um... Blocking the troll. Your troll's going to regenerate. Um, remember, I do, of course, have that uh, 
archaeologist and now I am taking off a 1-1 flyer and that means if I can bring back a 4-4 block the 4-4 and the flyer then again I also have to well do I have to but it would be nice if I can block the Sulkanar and playing my trike again I wonder what I'm gonna do I can also choose just to jump block and he's gonna ch he's gonna change his mat a little bit because there's a lot of um, sunlight coming in there. But I'm looking back at this game and it kind of looks like I mean it's nice to have a sage and archaeologist in play, but it it seems I'm I'm just not making the right decisions here, and I should have taken out that Bartle a long time ago. After I've take took out the oaken shield. Oh, and now it's pretty much over here. Now it's you know both in the archaeologist means that I cannot keep redeploying my sources and I'm shooting three on him actually well that's pretty much the end of it if I'm doing that but I mean <laughs> okay I'm just blocking with everything everything's dead now on my side of the table uh, I don't oh maybe I've got a balance a balance could be a reason for me to do this Oh, there's a balance. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. And I was already thinking, why am I making such ridiculous blocks? I mean, I'm still on 10 life. I can take a little bit of damage. Oh, really nice. Maybe then I can swing this around. Who knows? I'm still on 10. He's on 17. I mean, who knows? I uh, got 10 left. Tapping for th tapping six is probably yes. We see another big one. A 3-3. Three, three. Triskelly in here. And a Sage of Latin was still in my hand. Wow. That was a pretty good hand. Oh, look at this. The two had a giant 4-4 four, four creature not reprinted in Revise. So that's probably why a lot of people are not aware of this beautiful creature. And it can block two creatures because it has two hats. So very flavorful. Oh, wow. Again, that counter spell, that flash counter on my swords. And that is a pretty big deal here. Of course, I do have that Sage of Latin Empire to keep digging for cards here. Playing a Sapphire, playing an Island. And do I want to trade my Trike for... The giant, I don't. End of end step, I keep sacking artifacts here. This time the Mox Pearl, not really needing that white mana anymore. Tapping two here. And, ooh, yes sir. Playing my Chaos Orb. Playing another, wow, so now I'm really taking over the game it seems. Playing a 4-4 flyer. And there's a Chaos Orb from Jean as well. What is he going to do? He has so many targets. And choosing to take off one, playing an island, attacking here, not with the Tetravite, because that still has summoning sickness, but I can attack with the Tetravus, meaning he goes to 14. Oh, this is nice. This is nice, and I'm dead. This is it. Maybe I can sack a creature to look for a... Um, Look for Swords of Plows here. But no, I cannot find it. Okay, because that could have given me another turn. <laughs> wow. Well done, Jean. <laughs> really nice earthquake. That means 1-1, one, one, and we're going to game number three. Game number three. So the deciding game here, and wow. I mean, that, <laughs> that game number two was going everywhere i mean i felt like i was losing then i felt like i was winning and then in the end well when i felt i was winning i actually lost to an earthquake i mean brutal earthquake for i don't know a lot uh let's take a look at this game here starting off with a tundra passing turn here there's a mox by Jean, and there is a workshop on my side of the table that's always great when you're playing artifact heavy like me casting a suchi passing turn there's a volcanic no taking it back Let's see what he's up to. Playing a basic swamp. And playing an ancestral recall. 
drawing three cards and he's okay also finding a demonic tutor this is quite a nice turn for him so far with all those very powerful and restricted cards that he's able to play out and it looks like he's choosing the green mox playing it straight away to play a birds of paradise interesting so he must have something in his hand that he really wants to cast that's going to cost him a lot of mana. I'm thinking about a Legends card, because he's, I mean, a deck's full of Legends. In the meanwhile, I'm attacking, then playing a Sol Ring into its Sage of Latinam. So I've actually got a pretty good start myself as well. You know, I'm not doing too bad. And let's see what John can find here and what he can do. I mean, he looked up that Mox for a reason, and there's the reason. Tetsue Umezawa. And this card is another big problem for me because it can kill tapped creatures. So when I would tap my Sage, it can kill it. And it can also kill blocking creatures. So, and there it goes, playing my Tetravus. And the 4-4 Flyer attacking for 4 here. So apparently willing to sacrifice it. Because next turn, um, Tetsuo will be able to destroy it after the untap step. And it looks like Jean is asking about the Sage of Latin. Probably what I want to do is when he goes and kills it, I want to sack it to my Sage. He's paying the 4 mana to activate. He wants to kill it. And in response, I'm going to sack it and draw cards. So remember, we don't do mana burn because we're playing Swedish rules here. Or, or else I would have taken 4 damage of mana burn. Making this play, you know, not as, as good as it is right now. But I am losing my Suchi. And of course, you don't know what you're going to draw for it in turn. Attacking again with my 3-3 here. Interesting that they didn't just choose to take off all the counters. I think that would have been a better decision, to be honest. But I just went for the damage. Because he's already on 9. Oh, I'm playing a Hercules Recall. That explains it. Playing a Hercules Recall, and there's that Flash Counter again. Ah, oh, man, Jean, these Flash Counters are killing me. They're killing me. Obviously, what I wanted to do was take my Artifacts back to hand, sack that 1-1 one, one Flying Creature to my Sage, getting a card as well out of the deal, but it's not going to work. And, um, you know, but I'm just keep being aggressive. I mean, Jean is, is pretty low on life total, so I'm just trying to be very aggressive. Uh, in this third game, knowing that I also have four Triskelion in my deck, which are basically very, very expensive lightning bolts, but they can do the trick, you know, they can do the work. Um, Jean is on eight here. Oh, that's actually pretty good because it can block two creatures. That's actually a pretty good card right now. And playing a Wheel of Fortune, that's pretty nice. Oh, look at that, I had some nice cards in hand, especially that Brain Geyser. Although I cannot use my workshop for that, so it's actually not too bad. I could have done something. Ooh, he's taking out my Sage. I'm deciding not to use it for my Flyer, because I want to keep that 1-1 Flyer, because it cannot be blocked by the ground creatures, it cannot be blocked by the giant. So I choose to keep it instead of sacking it. And there's another bird. Let's see. Wow, this is exciting. I mean, he's on 8, but he seems to have stabilized. There is a Swords on the Tetsue. And now I'm going to attack. And he's going to block both. One is going to die. And he's going to block a bird. Okay, so that means... Ooh, and there are even more creatures. I just keep drawing threats this game. But remember, because of that um, short supplies here, he gained some life as well. So he's actually on 10 life now, which is not too bad. I mean, still got half of his life. He's got a lot of mana. He's got cards in hand. If we can just play out something big now. And it looks like he is going to. Oh, a fireball on both of these creatures. That is huge. Taking care of my workshop. That's I think that's a good move. But this is a huge fireball. Wow, attacking here for three. Meaning he's gonna go to seven, playing Thanos' coffin. And that can still take out a creature next, if he plays a, a, a big creature. Let's see what he what he's going to do. He's got a lot of mana here, playing an Atok. And he plays a Chaos Orb. 
and another birds. I mean, this game is, all these games are pretty complex actually. Choosing to flip and oh, he's missing the flip. I think it was flipping on Thanos' coffin or it was flipping, yeah, I think it was. Oh, he missed a flip and of course I feel very lucky right now because this could be, this could be determining the game because if it can keep the coffin, I can put stuff in there. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the Atok in the coffin and then I'm going to attack for three. Is he going to chump with his birds? He's going to take one damage here from the flyer. Taking a damage myself from the city, casting a Sage of Latin and passing turn here. Remember, when I take something out of the coffin, it comes into play tapped. So here we see the Oaken Shield. Again, a very dangerous creature because he can tap it to bring back anything from his graveyard, any creature. So I'm bringing back the Atok now but it comes back into play tapped, so he cannot use it as a blocker. So next turn, what I'll, yeah, what I'm probably gonna do, now put Oaken Shield in the box. That means that I can attack again, maybe even gonna attack with the Sage right now. And there I go, playing a Strip Mine, taking a damage again, playing a City in a Bottle, to just to sack, probably just to draw a card. And tapping one white to activate, attacking here. For some reason, I want to keep an untapped a strip mine. Why? It's not completely clear to me because he has tons of land. So, but I'm sure I have my reasons. And he's showing, he's showing his card. I couldn't see it. I guess he's maybe missing one of the mana symbols. It looks like he has all the mana that he could need. And untapping now. And Oaken Shield is still in the box. Gonna attack with the flyer here. So he's gonna go to four. And I'm gonna play out my Triskelion. And then he's almost dead, but almost is not complete. And it's his turn. Am I going to take this one? I've got a flyer. He needs at least to play a flyer now to block, or he needs to take care. Ooh, he cannot do it. Oaken Shield comes back, comes back into play tapped. I'm probably going to trap the Atok now. And that means it's smooth sailing from here. And that's it. Wow. Ho, ho, ho. What an exciting matchup. My goodness. And so nice to see those legends. Ah, thank you for bringing this deck to the channel, to the table. Thank you for this match. Very exciting. Uh, this time it was me who was was the most lucky uh, to win this one. But man, that were that was a close, close match. Jean, thank you very much. Um, Jean is actually one of my patrons. If you want to support the show as well, you can click on the link that's appearing right now and check on my Patreon page. You can also leave a like, leave a comment. It all helps. Thank you very much for that. Subscribing, also a great idea. What else is there to say? Let's take a look at the end scroll and check out all the patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.